Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube. And today I want to bring you guys a comparison video of the SwitchBot Hub Mini compared to the new SwitchBot Hub 2. So if you subscribe to this channel, you'll know that I've recently done a full review of a brand new Hub 2 that SwitchBot have just released. And a Hub 2 has some new features, including the ability to retrospectively add matter support to some of SwitchBot's devices. This is currently limited to the blind tilt and curtain devices, but SwitchBot will be rolling this out to more products via firmware updates in the future. Now I've put links below to my full reviews of both the Hub Mini and the Hub 2, but this video is an overview of the features and hopefully will help you decide whether it's worth upgrading or which Hub you should get if you're just diving into SwitchBot products. And at that point, it's worth saying that if you are buying SwitchBot products for the first time, it's certainly worth getting one of the two hubs. And this is because the hubs allow you to have out of home access and also use it with things like voice control and also scenes. A scene is where you might do something like open your curtains at sunrise every day. Now in this comparison video, let's start off by talking about price. Now the Hub Mini will cost you around £30 and the Hub 2 a higher price point of £80. Now SwitchBot quite regularly have sales and discount codes available and one of those is a 10% discount code that I've put below for you guys. Now that code is only available for use on the SwitchBot website but if you go to the Amazon link as well there's quite regularly sales on Amazon. So when it comes to price the Hub 2 is certainly more expensive but let's talk about some of the other features and let's focus on design next. So the Hub Mini is a small flat white device that sits on your countertop. Now you can hide it behind something if you want to, but if you want to use the infrared relay features, you're going to need to have it just on show so it can relay that signal. It can also be wall mounted if you want it to be. Likewise, the Hub 2 is also a white rounded device. It can be freestanding with its little kickstand on the back, or it can be wall mounted as well. Now it is slightly bigger than a Hub Mini, but that's because it has an LED display on the front. This front display shows you the temperature and humidity levels of your room, plus two action buttons you can use to trigger things like devices or scenes. The Hub 2 has the humidity and temperature sensor built into the cable that comes out the back. Now the infrared relay features in the Hub 2 are improved compared to the Hub Mini, which means you could just about get away with hiding it behind something if you wanted to. That being said, because it is a device with a display on the front, it's kind of designed to be shown and it looks really nice when it's sat on your countertop. And let's move on to features when it comes to comparing these two devices. And these two devices have some similar and some different features. And so I want to talk about the features they share to start with. So firstly, they both act as a cloud hub for SwitchBot devices. Now, most SwitchBot devices are Bluetooth compatible out the box rather than Wi-Fi. This means that the hub connects to those devices via Bluetooth and then uses its Wi-Fi to relay those devices to the cloud. This gives you access to your devices when you're not at home, but also using voice control such as Alexa, Google Assistant and also Siri shortcuts. Now, both of these hubs connect to your SwitchBot devices using Bluetooth 4 and then connect to your Wi-Fi using 2.4 gigahertz BGN Wi-Fi. Now, the second feature they both share is an infrared relay feature. This means within the SwitchBot device, you can program your existing remote controls and then use them via the SwitchBot app, or even set up things like Siri shortcuts or scenes to control those devices. Now, this is a really useful feature to have because it's much easier to reach for your phone than it is to reach for remote control that may be somewhere on your sofa or somewhere on the floor. Now for both hubs, the controls are programmed via the SwitchBot app and generally involve pressing the buttons whilst in pairing mode. Now for common televisions, the setup process is nice and easy, whereas for other remotes, it can be slightly trickier and involve programming every single button. That being said, this is something you only ever do once for your remote anyway. When it comes to the Hub 2, the infrared relay feature has been improved and it certainly has a noticeably better range. What this means for me is I found I can get away with tucking my Hub 2 behind my record player and it can still control my devices. This is something I couldn't do with the Hub Mini. Now that's it for features they both share, so let's talk about what features are new with the Hub 2. So firstly, it has the built-in humidity and temperature sensor. Now these metrics are shown on the display of the device, but then also within the SwitchBot app where you can access historical data. Now these are nice to have, however the chances are you might already have some similar devices around your house. For example, I've got a smart thermostat that does that already, and also some Apple HomePod minis that also have those features built in. This means in my case, those metrics are neither here nor there, but having the historical data is quite nice. Secondly, and this in my opinion is where the Hub 2 is really worth it, is that it brings Matter support to SwitchBot products. Now Matter, if you've not come across it, is a new standard for smart home devices, which has been agreed on by some of the biggest players out there. 
This includes Apple, Google, Amazon, Tua and Philips Hue. In the long run, as more and more devices become Matter compatible, this will make it easier to switch your smart home infrastructure. For example, if you decided you wanted to switch from Alexa as your voice assistant to Siri, you could do that without having to worry about which devices weren't compatible. Now, the Hub 2 brings retrospective Matter support to some of SwitchBot's products. Now, at the moment, it is only the SwitchBot curtain and the blind tilt devices that work with Matter. However, SwitchBot have said they can be rolling out more in the future. This means if you use the Google Home app or the Apple Home app, you'll find the SwitchBot devices can now appear in those apps. Now, as an Apple Home user, I'm mostly going to talk about that. And this is great because this means that I can now open my Apple Home app and see all of my lights and all of my switches, but also now see my curtains and blinds and control them from there as well. Those humidity and temperature metrics also appear in the Home app. Now, the Matter setup is a little bit complicated, and so I have made a separate tutorial video on that, which I'll link in the description below if you're struggling. So all in all, those are the features of the Hub 2 and the Hub Mini, but is one better than the other? And if you've already got one, should you upgrade? Likewise, if you're just buying into the whole SwitchBot infrastructure, which hub should you go for? Now, when it comes to using products, I used the SwitchBot Hub Mini for about three years, and I've been using the Hub 2 for about three weeks. And in all honesty, I can't fault them at all. They do exactly what I want them to do. I personally like the further IR relay range on the Hub 2, but the Hub Mini still works really well for that task anyway. And there really it comes down to what the ecosystem is that you use on your phone. So if you are an Apple user, I think the Hub 2 is the one to go for because of this Matter support. This is great because it brings those SwitchBot devices into your home app and makes it much easier just to pull down from control center to close your curtains. Of course, this also means you can then set it up with Apple's automations and control it with Siri nice and easily. Whilst I haven't tested how it works with Google Home as someone who doesn't use the Google Home app, I believe it works in a similar way with Google Home. If, however, you're trying to work out which hub to buy and you're not fussed about that, but you're on a budget, then actually the cheaper Hub Mini is pretty good still. So then finally, if you've already got the Hub Mini, should you upgrade to the Hub 2? And again, I think this comes down to what you use a lot of the time. So if you want to see your SwitchBot devices in your Google Home or Apple Home apps, then I think the upgrade is a must. Personally, I'm really glad about having upgraded. Personally, I don't think the on-device buttons with the Hub 2 or the temperature or humidity sensor are particularly useful, but that's just because of the way I've got my home set up, and they might be features that are really useful to you. If you guys have got any other questions when it comes to upgrading, do stick them below and I'll answer those. I've put purchase links on Amazon and SwitchBot's website for both of them below in the description for you, along with a 10% discount code for the SwitchBot website. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing to my channel, and if you really want to, there's a link below where you can buy me a beer. I'll see you guys again soon.